One Photoshop technique that I love to teach my students is one I call multiplicity. In this example, they take several shots of themselves in a static setting, but they move around. Then we take these images and we merge them together using a layer mask. The results are usually very fun and quite hilarious. This is how it's done. I play a lot of tennis, so it is only fitting that my multiplicity image relates to tennis. This is Coach Chris. I've played several matches against Coach Chris, and I don't think I've ever won a maximum of two games out of any match I've ever played. Coach Chris is everywhere, and sometimes it even seems that Coach Chris is on my side of the net as well. What I will take you through is showing you how to place the files and put an image like this together. If you take a look over in the layers panel, you'll notice that you'll see the layers and you'll see layer masks. And this is how this is put together. Starting from the beginning, I have my images showing here in Mini Bridge. I'm going to select and use four of these images. And after I select them, I'm going to right click and bring up the contextual menu, select Photoshop, and choose Load Files into Photoshop Layers. What that will then do is take these separate files and load them into this one document and load the layers all together. So that was very quickly done and you'll see over in the layers panel I have my four images here and here they are. Now what you will notice as I turn the visibility off and on is that the layers seem to shift uh, side to side because they are not aligned. I'm going to have Photoshop align these images. So first of all I want to select all four images, go to the Edit menu, select Auto Align Layers. I want to choose the Auto setting from the dialog box. OK. And now Photoshop will look at the similar elements in the image and align them directly on top of one another. And that will be why you may see some transparency around the edges of your in image. That's quite all right. For now, we're just going to ignore that and work with the images. Over in the Layers panel, you also want to make sure that the layers are in the proper stacking order. There may be one image that you prefer to use on the bottom as a base, and actually that image possibly for me could have been a scene without Coach Chris in it at all. So what I want to do is make sure that the layers are in the proper stacking order. So I actually want to take this top layer and take it down to the bottom position. And this file will be in that position. And we're going to drag this one down here. All right, so this is the order that I want the images in. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of all but the top, uh, but the bottom two layers. All right, so I've zoomed in and I have the layer that I want to work on selected. That is the second from the bottom layer. What I'm going to do is make a selection. I'm going to use the quick selection tool and make a very rough selection around Coach Chris. I want to select him. I may possibly even get part of the scenery. Right now this should be okay. And what I also want to make sure I don't miss is his shadow. I want to select his shadow in the image. Now once I have him selected, what I want to do is now go over to the layers panel and I want to click on the uh, layer mask icon. That is the third icon from the left. And once I click on the layer mask icon, Photoshop will reveal the area within the selection and hide the area outside of the selection, therefore showing me what's below or showing me the layer below. Now, 
you'll still see that portions of the racket uh, may not be visible. How do I show that? Well, I can get my paintbrush, my brush tool, and I want to make sure that I'm painting with white. White will reveal and black will hide. So with white set as my foreground, I can paint where I know the racket is or any other areas that I want to make sure that are brought into focus or into um, showing, actually revealing them, like making sure that the pant leg or the shoes around the edges where they touch the court and making sure that his shadow is where it's supposed to be and if I'm possibly erasing something that I shouldn't be erasing or hiding it, I then go over to the uh, toolbox and I switch the foreground and the background colors so that now I'm painting with black. Black will hide some areas or reveal areas below. So you want to make sure that you get the areas that you're supposed to see and hide the areas that you're not supposed to see. So I want to make sure that this shadow is continuing from the bottom layer and I also want to make sure that I see the shadow on this top layer. So what I did, I made a very loose selection initially with the quick selection tool. I then clicked on the layer mask icon. Photoshop will then reveal the area within the selection but hide everything else out of the selection uh, therefore allowing you to see two images. So I'm going to pause the video for a moment and bring up the next layer. I'm back and I've turned on the visibility of the next upper layer. I have the quick selection tool. I'm going to once again make a very rough selection to select Coach Chris and his shadow on the court. The shadow makes it look far more realistic than if you leave it out. And once I get basically in the area, I then go over to the Layers panel and I choose the Layer Mask icon. The area within the selection will be revealed and the area outside of the selection will be hidden. Now notice here around uh, Coach Chris's racket that uh, the leg from the other layer is not showing. So what you'll do again with the brush tool is alternately select the layer or select the layer mask. You have to make sure that you don't click on the image icons. You have to alternately select the layer and the layer mask so that you can hide or reveal portions to really get into the important areas to make sure that you have all possible areas showing like the shoes like the fingers, like the hands, like the shadows. So I'm going to pause the video and clean this up. Alright, I'm back. I've cleaned up the area between the tennis racket and the net and his legs and feet here and I'm ready to add in the last image. So I'm going to turn on the visibility of the topmost layer select it, choose my selection tool and once again make a very rough selection and making sure not to forget his shadow to zoom out a little bit to get that. And I'm getting parts of the court also, but that should be okay. So now go over to the layers panel, click on the layer mask icon that brings in the other images, select the brush tool, 
and you're going to paint with white to reveal more portions of this top layer. And if you need to hide any areas, you will change the foreground color from black to white. I'm sorry, from black from white to black to hide. Black will hide, white will reveal. Oops, made a little mistake there. And I'm gonna have to switch foreground and background color to portions of that image in the background back end. So this is how you can create the multiplicity image. After you're done, you would then get the crop tool and crop your image down to size to get the extraneous transparency areas out of it. And then commit your crop and you're done. So this is how the multiplicity images are created and good luck.